and also that we're in an environment where everyone knows that they have a chance to find their own success and to fulfill their own potential. That's why I wanted to serve on council. When I grew up here, I looked out into the world and I saw disparity. It was clear to me based on my own personal experiences and those of my friends. And many, we lose a lot of great talent in Virginia Beach to markets and to other communities where people perceive they're gonna have a greater chance to find their success. And so it's our responsibility to make sure that we are addressing those things that I mentioned to make sure that we are creating an environment where people are valued, where we're respected, we each are treated with the dignity we all deserve and that we have a chance to succeed. And that's why what inspires me to public service. And that's really why I hope Virginia Beach voters will give me a chance to continue serving for four more years. If uh, folks wanted to get in touch with you, Mike, how can they get in touch with you? Really easy. You can email me at Michael Berlucci at yahoo.com. Visit my website, BerlucciForCouncil.com. Visit me on Facebook, um, Councilman Michael Berlucci, or Instagram. I'm everywhere. Councilman Michael Berlucci, we're honored to have you uh, with the Coastal uh, Virginia Chamber of Commerce helping to uh, answer questions, define public policy for the residents of our region and our city. Uh, we appreciate you very much, and uh, we wish you uh, success in your endeavors. Thanks, Mike, for being with us today. Thanks. I appreciate it. J.P. Gus Gottsee, one of the directors with the Coastal Virginia Chamber of Commerce here on a special interview with one of our 
spotlights, if you will, for our candidate for mayor here in Virginia Beach. You're getting ready to catch another interview on the way. Thank you, Ms. Wagner, so much for joining us, and congratulations on your candidacy. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be with you today. We'll get right to it. I know you've been busy as can be. Um, COVID's on everybody's mind, obviously. Number one issue across the world, if you will. Virginia Beach, uh, no exception. Uh, what are your thoughts on it overall? And then we'll get into some of the economic aspects of it. Well, it's unfortunate we're in this position, obviously. So we have to make the best of it. And, the, you know, we've got to do everything we can to make sure that our citizens stay safe and stay well. The last thing that we want is to have a, experience a big rush into the hospitals and overburden the um, facilities. And we certainly don't want deaths in this area. Um, to me, the biggest challenge that we have as a community is testing because we, you know, to, as far as I know, it still takes several days to get test results. So that's, you know, we really need to get to a point where we have real-time testing so that you can go in, get tested, find out that day whether you're contagious or not. And if you aren't, you can go back to school, you can go back to your uh, life, go back to work. And if you are, then it's for the better that you um, isolate for the 14 days. You know, just out of curiosity, I don't know, Jody, uh, these athletes, high-priced athletes are getting tested all the time. They get their test back in five or 15 minutes or something. And just the average mom and pop Joe on the street, it takes several days. I guess that has to do with the price. You know, I'm a little confused about it. I have um, a daughter who had to go to New York and, to have a procedure. When she got up there, they said she had to have a COVID test. She went into a facility that was very organized, very easy. It took two minutes. Like there were little um, cells that they put you in, you know, little cubicles. Went in, they swabbed her, she left. And by dinner time, she had her test results. She, they That's were okay. to her. The economic and, impact, let's get to that, has uh, been devastating. So many businesses, uh, although I was down at the beach this Labor Day weekend on Sunday and it was packed, very, very active, but it's really been devastating. What are your thoughts on that? And has Virginia Beach done, done enough? So it is horrible. Um, we've been doing a series of small business roundtables and the stories that we're hearing are, are really discouraging. Uh, we've got people who are really trying to make ends meet. They're really trying to make their business successful and they're having a hard time, you know, um, restaurants. Even um, we, I met with somebody who runs a doggy daycare, caterers, anything that requires dealing with the public, they're really struggling to be able to make ends meet. Um, yes, the oceanfront was packed this weekend, but go there this week and I don't think you're going to find it to be packed. No, so, I think you know, they, they got a little spurt over Labor Day weekend, but overall the summer at the beach was down. But it's not just you know, those businesses, it's businesses throughout the city that are really struggling. These grants that are available that we have with a $10,000 cap on them, how would you go about distributing those? Well, and $10,000, as you know, when you're, when you're trying to run a business and you've got you know, massive rent and massive utility charges and employee charges, $10,000 doesn't go very far. Um, you know, the Virginia Beach had the grant program, they've issued about 257 grants so far. Of, uh, the most that you can get is 10,000 and that went jointly, free, if it was for rent, it went jointly to the landlord and to the tenant. Um, and most of the money went there. Very little money went to other things. Um, and that's, that's a problem because that is not gonna be enough to keep these businesses afloat. You know, on a side note, I do feel bad for the uh, landlords that have invested into these uh, investment properties. And uh, obviously nobody wants to kick anybody out, but those landlords have mortgages and bank payments to make as well. Um, so, so I've always been kind of torn there. Well, and I think that it, frankly, at, at a national level, there should have been something done to sort of freeze everything so that you know banks weren't collecting the mortgages, um, landlords weren't collecting the rent, and we let everybody sort of sit through this crisis and then catch up. But that's not where we are, so we have to go forward with what we've got. Tax relief. Um, we don't know when this is going to wrap up. 
Jody, if you and I had talked back in March, I guarantee you thought we'd be playing football and the kids would be back in school and that the summer would be rocking and rolling down at the ocean front. Obviously not the case. Uh, so tax relief is going to be a big issue. Your thoughts? Well, first of all, a lot of these businesses got hit with personal property taxes in June and they still weren't, they weren't even able to use their property. The, you know, the property was idle, their restaurant was closed or their business was closed. And yet they were asked to pay personal property taxes. And many of them paid it. So they got a little bit of a deferral, but now the taxes do. I think we need to take a hard look at how we work with them to create payment plans to allow them to get through this process. Uh, that is the biggest nut that they have to crack. We cherish, I know that's a big part of the city's budget, and we cherish our AAA bond rating, which is, of course, what's made Virginia Beach be picked for many years as one of the best managed cities in the country. Uh, how would we keep the books balanced? Well, I think we, we need to do a thorough exam of what we're spending, what we're getting in, and come up with a plan. You know, JP, when I served in Richmond, um, I was there for seven years, and I started as state treasurer with Mark Warner. And when he asked sure. me to be treasurer, we didn't know, we knew there was a budget shortfall, but we didn't know how bad it was. When we got there, it was a pretty big hole. And so he cut agency budgets, which in this case, instead of reading the word agency, think department, but he cut department budgets. And my department was cut 23% at the Department of Treasury. So we had to get our staff together and figure out how we could provide the same great services with less revenue. I think the city is going to have to do the same thing. We're going to have to come up with a plan, have departments talk about how they could handle, um, keep up their same obligations, provide the same services to citizens, but think creatively, do things differently. You know, sometimes out of a crisis, you really get innovation. Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with beans and cornbread diet because you can still survive. And I've never known a budget that couldn't be cut by one or 2% or whatever the case may be. Jody, it just seems like it was just a couple of years ago when you were city treasurer up there with Governor Mark Warner. I mean, those times just flew by, didn't it? They, they did fly by and all of our kids got older and we didn't, I don't know how that, we worked that out, but the kids grew up, but we didn't grow up. Not us, no, Not no. Us. Jody Wagner, candidate for mayor, from the city of Virginia Beach here on the Coastal Virginia Chamber of Commerce with J.P. Gus Gatsi, your host this afternoon. Let's talk about the other big issue that seems to me everybody talks about is flooding. Now, the city's been studying it a lot. I mean, the, really since, you know, flooding is not, while, while it's more prevalent now, we're paying a lot more attention to it now, um, the city's had flooding issues forever. Um, back in 2000, uh, I think it was 15, when Hurricane Matthew came through, that was when we really got sort of a whack on the head that we really have to pay attention. So the city has gotten, has had spent $3 million on studies. The studies have a plan. The plan will cost three to four billion, not million, but billion dollars to fix our stormwater system, which really has not been retain, maintained the way it needs to be. So that's gonna take a lot of creative financing and it's gonna take work of other partners. Virginia Beach can't fix that alone. We really need the help of the federal government. And the federal government has a vested interest in this issue because they have a lot of assets right here in Virginia Beach. We have four Navy bases. So they care very much about what happens. Um, fortunately, I have great relationships with the two, two U.S. senators and our congresswoman. We need to work together. We need to ask a lot of the federal government. We need it to step up and help us with the flooding crisis. Let's talk about, I hope we can solve that. That's, that really, it breaks my heart every time a storm comes through and you see these homes being flooded and people out in the streets. Terrible. Another thought, let's talk about the uh, ocean front. We have the Rudy Loop, which has been in the news constantly. The Surf Park, the Rudy Loop, just to name uh, two. There's been a lot of people that have wanted to have their hands in that pie, so to speak. Your thoughts? Well, I believe in a fair level playing field. And I think that everybody should have a shot. If we're gonna develop something, then we need to develop it in a way that retains the same benefits that the citizens currently have. The ability to surf there, you know, to come to the beach, to surf, to park, to walk, to enjoy the great facilities that we have. So we wanna make sure that we always preserve those benefits for our citizens. And if there is an, a way to creatively 
improve the facility and, and take advantage of it with economic development, I'm all for it. However, I feel very strongly that every, you know, everybody that wants to have a proposal considered needs to have the right to have that proposal considered. And I don't believe in backroom deals. I think that it has to be all out front. Everybody needs to see what's available, you know, what they can do, make a proposal. And then, you know, we need to evaluate all of the proposals on the table and pick the one that's going to be the best for the citizens of Virginia Beach. I think everybody would agree with that. And that has been on the front pages of the paper far too often, that good old boy back deals, uh, backroom deals. This Rudy Loop thing has been going on, and I've been here like you 35 years. It seems like forever. It has been going on forever, and we need to make sure that, you know, if we're going to do something, it's probably the most valuable o East Oceanfront property on the East Coast. So we need to make sure that whatever we do, it really enhances our city, enhances the life of citizens, and provides an opportunity for the city to become even better at what we do, which is um, being the best place to live in the country. One, one of the things, again, Jody for mayor.com is I believe your website, which I've looked at several times on there. Uh, Jody, you talk about diversity. Uh, I, I was the, on the human rights commission. I've known the police chiefs going back before Jacobs and Cervera and now uh, Zuccaro. Uh, those guys have worked very hard for diversity. It is just a never ending battle to get enough minority recruits in the police force specifically, but in area of the other areas of the government, how would you work to improve that? Well, first of all, we need to make sure that we are trying to meet the minority candidates where they are um, and, and be attractive to them. I think that we need to create a core so that they have a chance, students coming out of high school have a chance to be involved with the police, to, to learn about it, to start training. Um, right from the beginning, before they go on to another profession. I think we'll capture a lot of people that way. We need to look at our veterans that are as they come out of the service. And fortunately, we have a very diverse service. So they're, the Navy and the Army are, um, and Air Force are turning out people that are very well trained, but are also um, reflect the country and the different, nas different races. We need to use that as a as a fertile ground for, from which to recruit.